And I don't understand why is he unidentified when he has a report saying that he walked in there because the door was slightly open more than usual. That's how it go. You don't want to give up the killer? Oh well, that's how it go. They know. They know. They just think because they got money, they can beat it. Man, y'all cornered. If y'all beat this, did, did that'll show just how fucking corrupt Chicago and Rosemont is. All right, back again with another update. Um, two things I need to show you, so bear with me. Uh, it'll be this, and just to end an update on this. Um, the last thing that they reported on this site, and this. Now, I I don't know if any of you have seen this already, but I ran across it, and I think it's important. Um, it, it just shows everything that's going on, the filing, everything. You feel me? Now, on this site, I can't remember the last update they gave, but I know. Let's see if this night will move. I believe the last update I gave you was June 5th. It could have been uh, June 13th. I don't know. But. They've given a different update for this month, all right? And once again, if I haven't shown you this, June 5th stated that they do have a court time at 1030, all right? August 6th. So it's still going, you know what I mean? It's still going. And she's fighting a lot of people. Uh, over here it shows exactly who she's fighting and I know it shows over here also but to actually go into to real detail of who's who that other filing the other page showing the, showing the, the filing the actual filing of the case itself that page is showing who's who like directly and what I mean by this if you follow my cursor See this CPO Hospitality LLC DBA doing business as Crown Plaza. Then it shows you who's the registered agent. That registered agent, that's what your name under when you uh, file for a corporation LLC registered agent would be the one or one of the ones running the company or running the corporation or the LLC or whatever the company, right? So David M. Friedman, his name is on both. F and F Realty Ltd. His name is on both. Know what I mean? So he runs the. He's running the not only the, the hotel, but he's running the property that's on it, and he's running the company that that owns the property. Know what I mean? This is the bad boy, David M. Friedman. Okay, um, go further down, Capital Security. Also, the registered agent it, uh, agents is uh, put the MBC Rosemont LLC doing business as Murray Brothers. So she's definitely going after these. All right. Um, and there's more. Oh, trust me. There's a whole lot in this filing. It goes all the way down to explaining uh, exactly what she's uh what reasons that she's given to even be suing any of these people? You know what I mean? Is is going into it? So um, let me see if I gave y'all the last update over here. Come on, thing. Come on, come on. All right. So, this month, eighth, the eighth of this month, right, of July, we have uh, a response to the last um, event that took place, June twenty fifth, which was an agreed order entered. All right, and uh, they asked the judge name signed on this one. So, apparently, I'm assuming, 
agreed order entered has something to do with whatever who's filing what and the judge is agreeing to allow whatever whatever you know what I mean that's the closest I can get to it because I don't know exactly what's been filed you see what I'm saying if I knew exactly what's been filed then I can tell you exactly what that means but the judge's name is on it meaning there is an agreement that the judge has made with maybe that party or both parties or all parties and um here it says participant CPO hospitality so that is David Friedman's party right Let's slide back up for a moment yeah that's his party right so another response has been given by David Friedman's party or his attorney okay um whatever their response is i would love to know exactly what these people are filing because i know it's it's wartime you know what i mean these people got bread and they they trying everything and anything they can possibly do you feel me it's wartime but um yeah that's the last update they gave on that site um and again the short authenticity case number 2018 L013273 same thing over here if you go up to the top alright 2018 L013273 alright right up. okay so um I'm not going to read this whole thing Cause if you look over here where my cursor's at, you see how small that box is right there? It's a whole lot. So I'm gonna try to hit some of the key points and I'm gonna leave the uh, address to this file. I'm gonna leave an address to this file so you can see it for yourself if you wanna read through the whole thing or whatever, whatever. If I skip some things, I think it's best for you to do it in a way because if I skip some things, maybe you can catch something that I may have skipped that I thought, you know what I'm saying? Not that I thought wasn't important, but I just simply just skipped over, it. you know, trying to uh, save some time. But um, as you can see, she's named as the plaintiff, and they together are named as defendant, right? Now I don't know why they separated the Murray brothers from these three because it's saying and. I don't know what that really means because you know in law these things these simple little things like this can mean something great you know what I'm saying it can mean that he's not down with whatever they got going on and he's trying to defend himself from both them and her you know what I'm saying so it, it, it depends but anyway Uh, complaint and demand for trial by jury okay oh and also at the very top of this filing you do see 12 person jury so I'm assuming that is going to be some type of uh, trial going on um I'm pretty sure that these these entities that's that's trying to defend themselves from from Miss Teresa I'm pretty sure they are trying to keep it out of court Basically, they're trying to keep it from going in a trial. You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, they're also preparing for going to trial. You know, at some point, you know, at the, at the very beginning, you may try to keep it from going to trial, things like that. But at some point, when you realize, hey, this shit going to trial, whether we want to or not, that's when they get the ball rolling and they start going in hard. You know what I'm saying? So, you have to think about that also. Um... So let's go fuller back, uh, fuller back down. Where well, here it says, now comes plaintiff Teresa Mark, okay, as special uh, administrator for the estate of Kanika Jenkins, deceased, by and through her counsel, Beam Legal Team LLC, and for her complaint against defendants. And you know who the defendants are: CPO Hospitality, um, which is Crown Plaza. 
uh, FNF Realty, it's all sold by Friedman, Capital Security, and NBC Rosemont, which is also Merritt Brothers Caddyshack. Uh, at all times relevant, Teresa Martin was the biological mother of Kanika Jenkins. And I think that's very important that we must see that. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people keep saying that ain't her child, is a doubt, is not a, I never ran with that narrative. I always kept digging and kept digging to see if that's true. But I never ran with that narrative. All right? Because I never wanted to be wrong on that and steer people in the wrong direction. You feel me? So, instead of going with that narrative, I mean, it was so easy to do because it's very entertaining. To say, oh, no, you know, that's not her, that's not a real mama, and you know what I'm saying? But and I'm I'm looking like these people look too, too identical. The mama and the brother and the sister, they look just look too identical. You see what I'm saying? And so, I didn't run with that narrative because I, even though I did keep digging, you know what I'm saying? I always take that second thought and I always try to entertain that second thought as far as researching on that second thought, but I never put it out because it's bad energy and we don't know it is for a fight. You see what I'm saying? Nothing shows that this is not her real child. You know what I mean? But you still have to be careful and you still have to research to make sure and I've never seen the thing that deters away from the fact that this is her biological child so let me read that one more time right here Wait, if you follow my cursor number one at all times relevant Teresa Martin was the biological mother of Kanika Jenkins a petition to duly appoint Teresa Martin as administrator of the estate of Kanika Jenkins has been filed and is currently pending in the probate court of uh, Cook County, Illinois. And if you don't know what probate court is, go look it up. All right. It has a lot to do with this. <laughs> getting the state, getting money, getting properties of the de deceased. You know what I mean? And um, a lot of times children, cases on children have to go through probate court. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's that's still considered some as somewhat property okay a state of the parent you know what I mean all these things run neck and neck you see what I'm saying this is how law run law run by definitions all right um let me see no 12 times relevant plain of the Senate okay pulling all information All right, this is just saying that uh, the hospital is doing business in Rosemont and also Freeman's other company, FNF Realty, LTD, is also doing business in Rosemont. This is just going through, these are things that they have to do. You know what I mean? They have to type these things in and make sure that whoever's reading this know these things as factual there will be no guessing on why is this where is this you know what i mean so they have to type up type all these things in. it may seem petty to you know keep repeating things and a lot of times they do repeat a lot of stuff in here because they have to make sure now here's something interesting they're saying that Murray Brothers was was an Illinois corporation doing business as Murray Brothers Cattershite Restaurant here and out the Cattershite Restaurant in the city of Rosemont, uh, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Uh, Cattershite Restaurant leased premises from defendant CPO Hospitality LLC, all right, which is Crown Crown Plaza and FNF Realty, all right. So uh, nine times ten. These these people became buddies. You know what I mean? Catashite dude and and um you know the Murray brothers and and and, and uh Friedman, I'm pretty sure they became buddies. You know what I'm saying? By him being an actor, you know, 
and, and, and Friedman being a huge businessman in Rosemont. And, you know, we already know what kind of place Rosemont is. It's like a baby Hollywood almost. You know what I'm saying? Like a tiny speck of Hollywood. Ran by the mob. That's how I'm going to put it. That's how it is. That's how I go. So, let um, see. Number eight. This matter arises out of a September 10th, 2017 incident resulting in the death of Kanika Jenkins. Uh, that occurred at the Crown Plaza, Chicago, O'Hara Hotel. All right. Um, let's see. On or about September 9th, 2017, read number nine. All right, at approximately 1.13 a.m., plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, entered the Crown Plaza Defendant's Hotel as a guest. All right. Do y'all see the time? This is reported on the court papers. All right. 1.13 a.m., she came in. This is what they're running with. All right. So anything we want to prove around that, we have to prove it around 113 as far as the footage. You see what I'm saying? No, I mean, we can always say, hey, this is this and that and that. You know, they screwed up with the time and you know this. And I understand what y'all mean by they screwed up with the time. I see it. Okay? I see it. All time formats on the video especially in the format that they have it they have it in the 24 hour format not the 12 hour format they have it in the 24 hour format so every single digit every single slot the second the minute and the hour they're going to be double digits whether it says 130 35 or 130 24 it's going to say zero one three zero two four I get that but when you're dealing with this kind of case and you want to leave things simple as possible and you want to be able to explain direct you have to go with whatever they give and prove that what they gave is not correct it's hard saying that they screwed up with the time so another way of showing that is to just show that they screwing up with the footage itself. And that's what I've been doing. That's what a lot of us have been doing. Showing that they've been screwing with the footage itself. You see what I mean? That leads way to understanding that if they messing with the footage, then they got to be messing with the time. You see what I mean? If I take somebody out of, out of footage and I put them somewhere else, I'm messing with the time. Even if I'm not messing with the clock, I'm still messing with the time because I'm taking them out of a footage where they was and putting them somewhere else where they wasn't. Or allowing them to be shown where they was later on, but taking out things. For instance, and I'm going to leave this alone. When they took out the footage from the docking area. Come on. We know that camera work. It's common sense. All right. If you want to get somebody away from the crime scene and you are able to destroy a certain footage that would otherwise leave all questions done and over with you take that footage of that camera and you say things like oh it didn't work at the time and if you got enough power money and power to just let it be as that you're dealing with time now okay you're dealing with time now because now you're telling me that nothing exists right here. 
Nothing exists right here. This is what you're telling me. So I can't go into direct time to see where, who was, how did she get up there, things that I can't do that because you took that away from me. So you're still dealing with somebody messing with the camera, somebody messing with the footage, somebody messing with the time. It still involves in the same thing. I know I may be explaining it kind of crazy, but if you look in between what I'm saying, you will see exactly what I mean. They're messing with time regardless. So you don't have to keep trying to prove that they jacked up the clock because they jacked up the footage itself. Number 10, plaintiff uh, deceited. Kanika Jenkins entered the hotel completely coherent and without incident. All right? On or about seven on or about September 9th, 2017, at approximately 2 30 a.m. Plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, left a room on the ninth floor. Again, they're going with what was told to them and what the lawyers are agreeing upon. And what I mean, the lawyers, I'm, I'm, we're talking about Miss Martin's lawyers. All right. What information they agreed upon to give to the courts. And they, they agreeing upon the fight, even though they wasn't there, we wasn't there, but they're agreeing upon the fight. Whoever they got this information from, read between the lines of what I'm saying. Whoever they got this information from, including Miss Martin, whoever she got this information from, who told them that she left out of the room approximately at 2.30 a.m.? Who else? Right? So we have court papers with the agreed said information. On or about September 9, 2017, at approximately 2.30 a.m., plaintiff decedent, Kanika Jenkins, left a room on the ninth floor and was last seen by her friends at that time. Two thirty a.m. Number 12. My cursor right up. Slide this up out the way. On information and belief, prior to 230 AM. On information and belief. We caught that. Prior to 230 AM. On or about. See how they write or word that. September 9, 2017. There were multiple notifications to the Crown Plaza defendants and or agents of defendant capital security regarding the room where decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be. Let's move on. On information and belief prior to 2.30 a.m. on or about September 9, 2017, the Crown Plaza defendants and or agents of defendant capital security had actual and or constructive knowledge that there were too many occupants in the room where a decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be a smoke detector has been dis uh, disabled in the room uh, that meant where decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be and or there was a smell of strong intoxicants emanating from the room where the seated Kanika Jenkins was believed to be. All right. 14. On information and belief, prior to 2 30 a.m., on or about September 9, 2017, neither the Crown Plaza uh, defendants and nor Agents on defendant capital security who had actual and or constructive knowledge of dangerous and or impermissible conduct of individuals in the room where decedent 
Kanika Jenkins was believed to be. They didn't intervene. Basically what they're saying. Intervene or appropriately in, uh, investigated such conduct as was required under the circumstances then and there existing. All right. Number 15. On or about September 9th, 2017, shortly after defendants knew and or had reasons to know Kanika Jenkins was missing at or about 2.30 a.m., Teresa Martin was assured by Crown Plaza defendants, hotel staff, and employees and or agents of Capital Security that they would check and review all security cameras and footage to locate plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins. 16. On or about September 9, 2017, Crown Pleasant Defenders and defend, uh, Defendant Capital Security undertook the responsibility of checking security camera footage in order to locate Plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins. They undertook the responsibility. Basically, they say, we're going to do that for you. We got you. Right? 17. After defendants were informed of Plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins' disappearance, employees of defendants failed to properly monitor and or review security uh, video cameras and footage which would have shown the whereabouts of Kanika Jenkins which would have saved her life or could have saved her life right uh, Kanika was a guest at the uh, hotel was last seen on the elevators ninth floor uh, 19 playing the seat in Kanika Jenkins was last seen near an elevator on the ninth floor where surveillance cameras were installed in use and properly working and therefore she was observable now we don't know this for a fight because we 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 had people who went to that floor went to the ninth floor looked around with the cameras reported back to all uh, youtube and facebook and we seen no cameras but that's not to say that these people uh could not have taking these cameras down quickly all you need is a couple of drills and hide the, hide the wires and you're done you know what i'm saying so we don't know if you see what i'm saying hey it could be only time will tell uh number 20 on or about september 9 2017 at approximately 3 32 a.m plaintiff decedent uh plaintiff decedent kanika jenkins was seen on camera entering the kitchen through the employee door from the downstairs hallway of the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel, the downstairs hallway. All right. Uh, twenty-one. Uh, between approximately two thirty a.m. Now watch this. When uh, plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins was last seen by her friends. Two thirty a.m. When well, she got off the elevators at three, uh, three twenty something, right? Maybe 323 3, right? Hey. Alright. Kanika Jenkins was last seen by her friends at 2 30 a.m. That's what they're saying. But now, who's to say what time she actually got off the elevator? Because that's not what they're saying. What they're saying is that's just the time they were last seen by her friends. Okay? So she could have been roaming or could have been somewhere for a whole hour before she got off the, uh, off the elevator. I'm not saying this to be biased to uh, to my discovery and me thinking that she actually got off the uh, elevators at 320 something versus 220 something. Because even if that, even if that, still we can't discover if whether or not they was messing with the clock because we can only discover if they were whether or not they was messing with the, with the actual footage oh, once again. All right. Uh, had Crown Plaza number twenty-two. Had Crown Plaza, defendant staff and employees and or agents of defendant Capital Security check this. Uh, uh, basically check the footage again sooner. Alternatively, properly and timely reviewed the uh, video footage, they would have seen plaintiff decedent Kanika Jenkins enter the kitchen and would have been able to locate her. Okay, which would have prevented her death or possibly prevented her death. Once again, number 23, on or about September 9th, 2017, between 2.30 a.m. when plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, was last seen by her friends. Okay? They stated that twice. On document court papers. They say it is twice. Alright? Around 2.30 a.m. was last seen by her friends. 
and 3.32 a.m. when she was last seen on surveillance footage entering the kitchen of the Crown Plaza Defenders Hotel. She passed several hotel personnel. What? Where were they on the footage? These people that she passed, where were they on the footage? If this true, then they took people out of the footage. It's right here, documented on papers. Now, once again, I'm gonna tell you once again, it's things that they have to counter, claims that they have to counter, right? And they, that's what they've been doing. That's what all this is about so far, right? Counterclaims and things like that. Let me see if I can find an example. Here we go. Uh, on 613, okay? When Capital Security made counterclaims twice, okay? They made counterclaims twice. So people can be claiming things and then, you know, look, Murray Brothers. They answer to a counterclaim also. Okay? So, people are going back and forth. They're going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? They have to discover this and say, well, no, this is not true. They're going to do all of this with paperwork first. Right? All these claims and things like that and counterclaims. They're going to do all this with paperwork first. Because, truly, these motherfuckers is really trying to keep from going to trial. You know what I mean? And they throwing all kind of money at it. You know what I'm saying? They throwing all kind of money at it. Because they're trying to prevent from going to trial with this shit. And they're going to do the best that they can to keep people from having to sit in court, you know, wasting time, wasting money. That's how they feel. Right? That's how they feel. And, and, and that's, that, that's what they do. People who got plenty of money and stuff like that to avoid from sitting somewhere, they, they throw money at it. Right? All right. Number 24, after last being seen leaving the room on the ninth floor, after last being seen leaving the room on the ninth floor, plaintiff of the seated, Kanika Jenkins, was visibly disoriented and in dire need of assistance. Crown Plaza defendants, through their employees and employees and or agents of defendant capital security, should have assisted plaintiff the seated, Kanika Jenkins, which, was ha which would have prevented her death. So once again, they're claiming that she passed staff of the hotel. She passed staff of the security. She passed staff. You see what I'm saying? And nobody did nothing. They seen what condition she was in and nobody did nothing. That's that's what the claim is. Uh, 25 upon information and belief. Crown Plaza defendants maintain several double, uh, double walk-in freezers within the hotel, but locked and uh, sequestered them from excess by the general public. 26 at all times relevant air to the kitchen within the Crown Plaza Defendants Hotel contained a double walk-in freezer that was accessible to the general contained a double walk-in freezer that was let's go back to 25. Upon information and belief Crown Plaza Defendants maintained several double walk-in freezers within the hotel but locked and sequestered them from excess by the general public. But help come down to 26 at all times relevant air to the kitchen within the Crown Plaza or uh, Defendant's Hotel contained a double walk in freezer that was accessible to the general public and all defendants, agents, and or employees without restriction on excess. Right? So this is where the Murray brothers come in at because nigga y'all were in this spot y'all didn't hire no personnel to make sure that this shit was secluded right y'all didn't make sure that this was blocked off away from public excess so this is why the Murray brothers is in this uh 27 at all times relevant air to the double walk-in freezer in the abandoned kitchen within the crowd plaza defendants hotel had a sticker a fist that was completely faded and failed to instruct how to release the lock system of the door. All right, that's a different complaint. Because if you're saying that she was out of it, then that sticker wouldn't even matter anyway. 
Um, at all times, relevant air to the double walk-in cooler in the abandoned kitchen of the Crown Plaza Defenders Hotel was unused and did not contain any food or produce. Again, this is another complaint or another claim that they have to go back and forth and prove either through paperwork or wait till trial. Uh, 29. Upon information and belief, all coolers and freezers within the Crown Plaza Defenders Hotel was uh, supposed were supposed to be temperature monitored on a regular basis. Let me see. Uh, when the family did not receive responsive uh, response from the Crown Plaza Defenders Hotel staff and employees and or agents of the uh, defendant Capital Security. On or about September the 9th, approximately 3, uh, 3.20 p.m. is when Rosemont Public Safety uh, Police uh, commenced an investigation at the Crown Plaza Defenders Hotel, all right, 32, upon information that belief it was not until after Rosemont Public Safety Police requested review of this uh, surveillance that the Crown Plaza Defenders staff and employees and or agents of Capital Security actually begin the undertaking of reviewing surveillance footage. Now, this is the only time that y'all decided to look at the damn footage. Now, here's a crying mother asking you, please, check the footage. But you wait till the police come damn near in the middle of the motherfucking day. Now you want to check it. You know what I mean? So that's what that's talking about. On or about September 9, 2017, at approximately 10.30 p.m., an unidentified employee entered the effa said kitchen or the aforesaid kitchen and failed to discover plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins. Who was that? The only person we know that walked in there before the police is the manager. So how is he unidentified? So who was it? It was the, you remember the guy that it seemed like somebody came right behind Kanika when she entered the kitchen. It seemed like somebody came right behind Kanika and just looked that direction and walked off. The dude that's checking all the temperatures, that's who they talking about. Why is he unidentified? We know who he is. Why is he unidentified? What did they do with him? What he hauled ass to? Because he seen some shit? Why is he unidentified? We know who he is. He the motherfucker that was checking all the goddamn temperatures on the freezer. Y'all better identify the motherfucker. He got to come to court too, goddammit. He's a part of the hotel. Thirty-four or um, on or about September tenth, twenty seventeen, at approximately twelve twenty-five a.m., plane of decedent. Kanika Jenkins was found unresponsive inside of the double walk-in freezer of the Ephesian kitchen of the Crown Plaza Defenders Hotel. All right. Now they saying documented it was 12:25 a.m. when she was found. And we know who found her. It was the manager. Now This and this is approximately two hours apart. All right, five minutes off. This is approximately two hours apart. So, two hours later, she was found. So, the guy at 10 30, the unidentified guy who, which we know was the one checking all the freezers for the temperature uh, gauges and stuff, at 10 30 p.m., when he came in and looked and didn't go over there to the freezer to check the motherfucking, uh, check the gauges, you mean to tell me two hours later she was found in that same area, in that same direction he was looking, in that same freezer that he refused to go over to and check the gauge? Why did he even come in in the first place? Well, remember, he said on his report that 
And I don't understand why is he unidentified when he has a report saying that he walked in there because the door was slightly open more than usual. He walked in the kitchen because the kitchen door was slightly open more than usual. So why is he unidentified, right? So two hours later or approximately two hours later, like I say, five minutes off, approximately two hours later, now she's found. So did he go and whisper this in somebody's ear? And say, hey, y'all better do something about that freezer. Or, hey, I think uh, something going on in that kitchen down there. Uh, you better check this, uh, the footage and see what's going on. Hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? 35. On information and belief, decedent Kanika Jenkins was caused to die from. This is what they saying. This is what's documented. Was caused to die from hypothermia and or freezing to death which caused immeasurable conscious pain and suffering prior to her death. All right? And if that's the case, if that's how she died from hypothermia, that is true. That would be an immeasurable conscious pain, meaning that's something that you are feeling until your death, which is a slow death, right? So if that's the route that they want to go and they don't want to say, hey, this person right here is the one who killed her. Let's get this shit over with. If y'all want to go this route, then let's let's do it then. Immeasurable conscious pain and suffering prior to her death. Pay that later her money, goddammit. And shut that bullshit down. All right. Now, I don't think I'm going to be reading all of this because most of, like I say, um, most of this stuff is just going to be a lot of repeating. All right, it's going to be a lot of repeating. Um, and they mostly do that to make sure the wording is correct, so you don't have any any reason to believe that there's a loophole. You know what I'm saying? They close all loopholes when they do stuff like this. For instance. Plans of seating, real ledges, uh, and real certs all previously enumerate paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. That's lawyer talk. At all pertinent pertinent times herein, Crown Plaza defendants own or uh, uh, owed a duty to provide security and maintain a safe premises. See, that's a repeat. We already read this, right? But they just reword it. So that's that's how they do. It. They they reword things over and over and over to make sure there's no loopholes. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna leave the address to this document down in the um down in the description area. Another, for instance, 46, that Crown Plaza defendants were negligent and or grossly ne uh, negligent and responsible for, and look, fell into secure areas, fell into secure areas, fell into maintain, but look how they rewer uh, reverted these two. Failure to secure areas which should have been closed off to the general public. Fell into secure areas restricted to employees only. See what I'm saying? They're saying the same thing, but over and over and over in different words so that they close any loopholes. So, uh, let's see. Same thing. So, yeah, we, uh, we covered the basis, right? Uh, here's another interesting one. That, uh, number 53, that as a direct and proximate result of their bold described actions, plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins and her estate suffered damages, including, but not limited to, conscious physical pain and suffering and death, severe emotional injuries, mental anguish, see what I'm saying? Mortification and humiliation, embarrassment and denial, social pleasures, economic loss, including uh, wage loss, medical expenses, see what I'm saying? Exemplary uh, damages, punitive damages, attorney fees and costs. Like they putting it all in there. Bashing their ass, banging them. You know what I'm saying? That's how it go. 
That's how it go. You don't want to give up the killer. Oh, well, that's how it go. They know. They know. They just think because they got money, they can beat it. Man, y'all cornered. If y'all beat this, did, did that'll show just how fucking corrupt Chicago and Rosemont is. Right? It's no way y'all can beat this. These, these are definite claims. All right? These are definite claims. So, this has been an update. Uh, hope you guys uh, found something important to yourselves, uh, to your conscience of the case. Uh, see you soon.